Stuarts. How was England governed? James I was a strong advocate of royal absolutism, meaning he opposed the influence of an increasingly self-assertive parliament. James I also believed in the divine right of kings. This meant that James felt responsible for interpreting the law himself and believed that God put him in the position of king. Despite these beliefs, Parliament was coming to play an indispensable role in government that would increase its significance as the monarch's wealth diminished. How was society organised? Society in 1603 was organised by hierarchy. This can be seen through the class structure, where a scribe status was common, a form of power making it difficult for someone from a low birth status to move up the social ladder and gain success. This sense of order and authority was encouraged by the great chain of being, this meant that society's power stretched from God to everybody else in an order with an appointed place, so somebody was expected to stay in that position and not move up or down. The population of England at this time was increasing massively, but agriculture and industry couldn't keep up at the same rate. This led to inflation and a lot of unemployment. The urban wealth of England was concentrated in London, making it the largest city in Europe at the time. Religion in England <laughs> In 1603, the Church of England ruled the country. The king was its supreme governor. Bishops and archbishops had a lot of power and sat in the House of Lords. Most of its members were moderate Protestants and Puritans were a vocal minority. However, the influence of Puritans was quite high. There was far more Puritans in England than Catholics at this time. James had been brought up by Presbyterians in Scotland, but did not accept their ideas. James liked having bishops and a church who agreed with him about the divine right of kings. The influence of Puritans was quite high at this time and they were desperate to make changes. James was rather lenient and responsive to their proposals but ultimately little change happened. James was initially quite tolerant towards Catholics, however after the gunpowder plot and parliament influence in 1604 meant that the treatment of Catholics became a lot harsher. Finance in England The population grew from 3 million to 4.2 million in over half a century. As previously mentioned, agriculture couldn't keep up with this high demand, which caused some famine in England. James wrongly believed there was plenty of spare money in England. He was extravagant with gifts as a way to win over friends. James was also very fond of elaborate court festivities, which were a big expense, as well as spending heavily on funerals and weddings. Foreign policy in England. One of James's key foreign policy aims was with the union between England and Scotland. However, the English were unwilling to admit the Scots as citizens of England just because they shared the same ruler. James inherited a war with Spain, but he had little desire to place himself at the head of the Protestant crusade, so he ended the war in 1604. Overall, James desired to act as a peacemaker. However, a neutral policy is almost impossible without favouring one side. James called himself Rex Pacificus, which means King of Peace. Again, this shows how he wanted to be a peacemaker in Europe and have an influential role in their diplomacy. Thank you for watching.